Welcome back to Tools and Track. I have said this for about five episodes now, but this time I promise, in this episode, we'll put a diff in. Are you interpreting for the diff? In today's episode of We Continue Removing Parts from the MX-5 that disappeared months ago, I what are we doing today? I'm going to blow myself up. There, there are a lot of reasons why we're getting rid of it. The first of all is, it's basically a bomb. <laughs> uh, it has fuel in it. You'll be, so, you'll, be, you'll be pleased to pleased to know that we've done m most of the welding next to it. Yeah, so. the welding machine was, in fact, it's still here. As we repeatedly smell petrol, it's time for this to go. I'm starting to get... Oh, yeah, there we go. See, yep. now this, is, this is my worry, is that it's doing this siphon thing. What does that mean? This. Oh. Hold that up. Up? You want me to block it, aye? Uh, gravity won't like much. Right, let's see how much that'll drain it. Oh, nothing coming out? No. No, it's just when I need to put my f***ing finger over it clearly. Uh, we've got a number of options here. Now this is the fuel pump. That's what we need. That's what we need. Uh, so what I might do is we'll take the pump out and then we will siphon. Oh, run a 12 volt feed. No, pump. far more no. munch bag than that. Okay. We are going to siphon the fuel from the tank into the container safely. Although I will need some pole mints. Yeah. Uh, do you know what's exciting about this, David? Is I I don't know what I'm going to use this space for now. I know it's great. We're what, the most what I think I might do is just just buy. Is that pressurised? Apparently. Um, what I might do is just buy another fuel tank to leave here, for, just for the risk. <coughs> I'm going to open the door. Oh, that's right. It's. <laughs> There's actually not that much fuel in this. Well, actually, that's it. Is. <laughs> mm -hmm. <coughs> I haven't actually ever in my life seen anyone do this before. So the reason that we're going to siphon rather than just pick the tank up and, and bend it is because there's about six million different ports in this that are all leaking at the moment. I'm just going to have to do the thing, aren't I? Hey, we've got the technology. <laughs> ah, nice. Yep, that is exactly what this is for. Yeah. Well, you just blew bubbles. Aye, I don't need to shut the f before I can start it. <laughs> oh, there you go. Are you trying to stop? Can you stop it? I can lift it at this end, can I stop it, or you can do that. And stop it again. How very genius. I did say it, I did promise it, so we'll let you do it. We're going to mount the diff in this episode. As you'll see, the diff is currently, <laughs> optimistically, placed where it needs to be and has been sat here for, oh, I don't know, about three months. So as a result, it's time for us to drag it out of here and actually see what we need to do to get it in. But in typical tools and track style, I'm going to procrastinate a lot because there's things we need to do before this. But I promise this will be in, in this episode. I promise. Right, so the first thing we need to do is catch up to where we were in the previous episode. Now, as you'll see, this engine is sitting in and we did promise it was going to come back out so that we can upgrade that. We need to chop out the rest of that and we need to beef up this. So we're going to do that first and then once that's done, we can then look at getting the engine out. Is that right? Hmm. Does the engine not need to come out before you do it, all of those things? No, well it needs... That's going to be before you chop that bit to pieces anyway, otherwise, you know, access, well, you know, be... Yeah, and as we've proven so far, it's physically impossible to do it until yeah. it's out. But I've got the markings done, so once it's out, we'll get that chopped. Similarly, we'll get all these mounts beefed up as well once it's all out. So yes, the engine needs to come out, but before I take this engine out, we need to do a few little bits to the frame, just so we know it's going to work. So one of the first things we need to do before this engine comes out is add a gusset. Normally what you would find here is a spar that will run from here right to this gusset at the front of the suspension is. Unfortunately, we might have an engine in the way. That can happen from time to time. So instead, I'm going to run a gusset from here to here, taking it as close to this inlet manifold as I can, mainly because I just want as much strength as I can put in here. Once there's a spar in here, I'm now going to triangulate that down and double up what I would have here to add that strength that I've lost from the top. So 
So, hammer, grinder. What's my third? Buzz gun. Oh, the buzz gun. How could I forget my Aldi Lidl buzz gun? Yeah, I think we'll get to use all three of them. Cool, so what am I doing? We need to compactify that. So I think what we need to do here um, is strip out everything I need. Right. So the four to two part of the, bra the manifold? That will remain unchanged, but we yeah. do have a couple of mods and I'm going to let you weld that. Oh, 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 oh. excite. Basically what we're going to do is... Take it all to pieces? Take it all to pieces right. uh, and bin what we don't need. Right, now, okay. I need to keep a cat. You need to keep a cat, yes. I'll need to keep uh, all of the lambda the lambda, yeah, yeah. So this is post and pre-cat, yeah. Yeah, so I need to keep the two lambdas, post and pre-cat, all my flanges, but everything else will be rebended basically. This is going to be exciting. I've, I've, we've I've done, got a chubby. We've done enough, enough the exhaust so far. We, we, we might have. That I'm pretty sure you know what's involved with this. Yeah. So I'm just going to leave you to it. Cool, excite. What I've done here is jack up the gearbox because what we're going to try here is testing to see if my mount will work without interfering with what will be panelled off stuff that I can get all of this out without any problems. And yes, I know I'm using my hands here, but that's more for convenience than anything else. Also, you won't be able to see my face in the real version of this, but I'm pretty sure you're done with seeing my face by now anyway. I did consider shaving recently. <laughs> but then you realised you were... Aye. I can't think of the word. Not thin enough. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, I, I, must, I must confess, the benefits of a beard to hide the second chin are not lost on me. It's, the second chin is not the problem, it's 17 because of the... <laughs> right, so now with this off, I would like to think this should be removable. Easy. Like that. Now, the big question is, have I just hit what will be panel? Yes, you have. Like but if I was to tilt it like that, it won't. It depends where the panel is. The panel will be on the outside of that. Right, okay, then, yes, right. Voila. One gearbox mount in there. I'm surprised how easily this is coming apart. I mean, it's a really old car, and honestly, the rest of it was beeped, like completely and utterly made a rust. I mean, you heard them all set. these bolts have come off without any effort at all. So, so this is going to be easy, is it? No. Ah, right. Cool. At some point it'll get difficult, ah. but I thought this bit would be really hard and it's not. I'm I've done this actually. on cars half this age and it's taken cutting the bolts off. Do you know why it's Focus probably... STs, for instance. Do you know why it's probably come off really easy? Why? This, is not as far, this isn't the first exhaust it's had. Ah, yeah, it probably is a replacement system, yeah. Aye. Oh well. It's, it's coming off easily enough. So. More importantly. Yes, but... Scrana clock. Scrana. Here's, here's an example of a healthy lunch courtesy of Tools and Track. So what do we have? A double rat burger with extra cheese. Melty, fatty, greasy cheese. This will be more of the same. Yep. What did you get me? Your sister here, yeah. <laughs> and then, just to make sure we've got enough cheese in our diet, Chips with cheese on it. Does cheese have any? Do you believe in vitamins? I do. just removed an engine. So now that we've got the engine out, it's time to finally start on the diff. I'm going to make a start on that and Mechanical Voodoo is going to get onto modifying my gearbox while I do it. But before I get started on the diff, nobody puts baby in the corner. I want to have this kind of over here so it's easier to not just work on but film for you lovely people to view. So we're going to flip the chassis 180 degrees and this is where I come to test whether or not this thing's still light. Because I'm going to do it myself. I have my doubts. Yuck. Yeah. Right. Not so much that you can't lift the combined weight, it's the, the awkwardness. Where are you going to lift it from for a start? Well, from the middle where it's balanced. But you can't stand in the middle anymore? Yeah. Right, go and turn it. You're an asshole of a man. 
My only consolation prize is you have nothing to jack up. Well, that's why you're here. So I can laugh and stand here. <laughs> yeah, <they're> heavy. <laughs> so work is proceeding at pace. We had one of a bolt. I left a nice gap there for the editor so we can easily deep over it. Uh, so this is kind of what we were gunning for. This is the flange and it's flattened here. Obviously it needs a wee bit of clean up prior to it getting put together, but we can do that when we're fabricating the exhaust. The next piece I'm looking at is the cat. Now a couple of questions for Thomas. Where did we cut? Now he has answered off here. Here, the weld line, because that way you can fabricate it into the new system. But my next question is this heat shield, which is basically just rusty garbage, as near as I can tell. Um, are we retaining this or are we burning this? Uh, well, quite simply put, uh, the cat's going to have to live outside the car. Yeah, I can't imagine heat retention is going to be much of a problem for us. But similarly, uh, the sharp object IVA failure will be. Real so well. if anyone kind of catches himself in that, they will die a horrible flaming death. Of course, I so, you know, uh, it would anybody think about the children? I think we'll need to lose that and we'll just do an exhaust wrap on it instead. Cool. I'm happy to get rid of it because it looks absolutely barking. I, I actually thought that heat shield really tied the car together. How do we get this off? Do we, uh, see the see that tool to your right? This one or this one? I mean, you f that big boy. Right Troops, we're back in the gusset train again. So now that we've got the gearbox mount out, this guy you'll remember from some amount of episodes ago, I've templated a gusset. Simple triangle guy, it's going to sit in here between these two bolts and add a bit of strength. Now you'll pay attention here, I've actually cut a recess, a little relief just in the corner of this gusset. That's because we're welding it into folded steel. Now a folded steel section is always going to have a crease to it, basically a bit of a radius rather than a sharp edge that it butts into. So in order for us to clear that, I've just added just a wee bit of relief, as you can see. We'll fill that in with weld obviously once it goes in place. And that looks like this. You may have a slight defeatist appearance at the moment. I do, I do. I've, I've got a real reason why I've not really went back and addressed this diff casing for several weeks now. Um, as you've probably gathered, we did this in a bit of a rush. This was one of our few episodes ago where I was like, right, let's do the, the entire chassis in a day. We did a lot of progress, we got through a lot of things, but I rushed it. And one thing you should never do when you're building a car is rush it. Because you just make mistakes. So the, the patch up that I did over here to accommodate this bar being too low worked really well. We have done all the transmission tunnel, it's proven to be a workable solution. What I then did was rather hurriedly the, create the other side and weld it in completely off where it needs to catch. Oh dear. Now I've thought days and days worth about maybe putting in another spar here but this is wrong. And I'm only just own it. This needs to come out and be redone. I mean, it is really visible how much smaller Completely the triangle is. Yeah. I have no idea how I missed that. So, before we start the diff, this needs to come out and get redone. I mean, today we've done three different episodes worth of content, so naturally there's going to be mistakes. There's well, nothing, there's nothing we'll wrong not, with We'll not give any spoilers, but no, yes. No, 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 no. We are doing not one thing a week. We do many things and then piece together an episode off the and back. And you are human, so... Well... Unfortunately. Well, the diff was moved, 
Although I, mean, I wouldn't call it mounted yet. Could we just say that's it? I've got the diff in the car and we'll leave it there. I mean, if we, if we raise the engine by a couple of feet. You know that mad Russian build where a guy's mounted like a straight six on top of another straight six? Except we would just have a prop running through the heads of the two passengers. Welcome to Russia. <laughs> yes, so what we've got here is a diff. And what we now have is a fully rectified chassis that's ready for me to start with this. So, our diff on the MX-5, as most folk will probably be aware by now, is not a conventional setup. You've got push here, push here, and then what would have been some form of assembly for the torque tube run into the front. Now, for this episode, what I'm going to focus on is hanging it. We're not going to look at drive angles or anything like that yet. I just want it in the car and hung. So for that, we're going to utilise these top two here. So, the first thing I'm going to do is make a subframe, more or less. It's going to be the start frame that I'm going to make match this. And then from that, I'm going to remove the subframe, weld it in the car, so that when it's ready to go, we can just bolt the guy up. Um, so for that, we're going to need a pair of cups that the bolts will go through, and then that cup will be linked with a length of inch by inch tube. That, and that, and that is what we had on the diff. And what you can see here is, I've got a flat surface in this. That I've stood off to allow for the gap between this and this. And I've bolted that, I say bolt, clamped that down using these two. Then, quite separately, I've got two bolts here of equal size clamped onto this flat surface here, which gives me a standoff and a parallel datum to make sure these two are flat. No, it doesn't. This should allow me a temporary jig to at least spot weld all this in place. Probably. And with some luck, the geometry will be right. Alright, isn't he? All right, it's in. Come on, that's that's got to be it's in. I know it's not welded, but it's you, in. You've, you've put it in the cable ties and the block about. I'm not sure I'm buying it let alone the fuels. Just trust me, it'll take torque. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Right. The reason I've got to this point and I'm going to pin it is valid. You will see here that we are literally dangly movie suspended on this, sprung, if you will. The reason being, I need to do a lot of math to get this exactly squared and then do a lot more math to get it all triangulated with steel and welded at exactly the right angle. Now I've already got the X and the Y perfectly flat. That's this and this. And I know that the pinion angle coming in, as in that face, is perfectly 90 degrees to the floor of the chassis. It is pretty accurate at the moment, but I don't want to rush this like we did a few episodes ago and f*** it up. So I'm not going to do that. But, as promised, the diff is in. We are ready to finish that off. Go over at the board and have a chat with you. The good guy list, and more importantly, the Patreon list. I know it's been a while since we've all seen the board. So, here's a board. Here's what we've been missing from every episode for about, I would say, half of this season. The cars on axis stand will work out somewhere putting the board, but at this point I need to take a stop and say thank you. Thank you to all the Patreons that have started joining us. Thank you to everyone who's had their name on the board and noticed it's missing. And thanks to everyone who since then have joined. Your names are going up here. You're helping this build progress. Without you, this would be nigh on impossible. So I'm taking time out to show you on the board and say thank you. 
your help is very much appreciated. We'll be back in the next episode looking at something in a bit more of an intricate detail than just chucking in a diff. And yes, I promise, we will actually make this diff properly. Eventually. Probably. See you next time, guys. Because if I run a seam of weld down in this bit... What's that, Tony? You need silence? You need to be held accountable, sir. So remember, many, many moons ago, you said, try Bovril, you'll like it. Aye. And I, I objected and resisted until the last minute. And then you liked it. Aye. Now I can't f***ing find it anymore. So what uh, you've done there is you've get you, you've hooked me in heroin and I live I'll out in the sticks. That's, that's, that's hateful. So tell me, where the hell do you get? I will ask. So let's start with the, let's start with what aisle because I mean, like, it certainly doesn't live in the tea and coffee I aisle. I think Asda's where we got it from, and it was the tea and coffee aisle. And do you know where else it doesn't live in the gravy aisle, which is the second place I tried. <laughs>